Mama had five kids, my youngest son, and I'm really doing the most. Two girls, two boys, they doing, graduated from school. My last year, I'm trying to get it out the way. And positive drumming, that's, what, that's how I can get it. I gotta pay bills. I gotta pay the, the cable bill. I'm young, you know. And I ain't like I gotta pay a lot of bills, but it's something. And, I, and it helped me keep getting money. Started like, like two years ago downtown. My big brother here introduced me to beating the drums. And I liked it. It was money. So I couldn't be with all the guys because I couldn't be with all the guys because of, they said I was weak. So it was a routine. Now, I got good, I'm being better than them. They want me to be with them and join with them. Since I was a little guy, they wanted me to be with them. I guess everybody loved me, but bigger, grown now, and I gotta pay bills, and this can help me provide my family. That's for It took me like a year to the most, and I got good at everybody around me. First time I started beat was on 55th and Garfield. It was a little expressway across the street from Checkers. Got made a couple of dollars out there, it was okay. I started saving money out there. Yeah, it was a good way to save, a good hustle. I wasn't robbing nobody. Like positive, I ain't never been locked up. I ain't wanna call no trouble. I like that. That's keeping me out of trouble, bro, basically. Oh, man. I'm finna get ready to um, leave downtown. I'm finna get ready to go, go on 87 and go make some more money, man. I'm trying to go see if I can make me a hundred or something real quick, man. For this um, for church laid out, you know, it's Sunday right now. <laughs> go try to go make some more money. That's all on my mind. and a pair of drumsticks. Those are the two ingredients young men known as the Bucket Boys used to create the sounds that helped them survive. Visible in areas of downtown and on the city's south side, they can be seen bobbing their heads while creating rhythmic patterns. To some, they're panhandlers. Others just want to see them move to another corner. Still others think they're pure entertainment. Perhaps you've seen them playing on a street corner or at a sporting event even Michigan Avenue. They're known as the Bucket Boys. We come out here to make something for something to eat or, you know, anything, rent, bills, phone bill. Come out here and make my money for it. That's how you make your living. Yeah, like my job. You know, it ain't like I gotta pay a lot of bills, but it's something, and, I, and it helped me keep getting money.
Yeah, all right, now spending this little morning right now with my son. Just got through feeding him breakfast, you know. Finna get ready to go out and go hustle and make some money. Probably downtown or on 87. My plan is try to get downtown, see if the police gonna be hot, harassing us or whatever. If, you know, if I can't make it downtown, I'm gonna go make it on 87. Damn right. Actually, um, I got a cousin that's one of the original bucket boys that, that started it back mm -hmm. like in uh, 1990s when, the, when it first started or whatever. So he had told me, shit, there's money into it. You know, I had came on from the county. Ever since I came on from the county, I like remember I was just trying to be no buckets to, you know, to make a positive dollar. I started beating buckets my first time at the Cubs game, Wrigley Field up north, north side of Chicago. And then, you know, once the baseball season was over with, I had to find somewhere else to go play. Um, I went on went on 87, actually, and I, I liked it, kind of liked it. And then, you know, I was making money up there, so money was coming, so I just stayed up there a lot, you know to the baseball season far back. You know, I travel a lot, you know, go to Detroit, and travel other states, St. Louis, like baseball, like baseball season and um, the baseball stadiums, they like, they like us. It's like, that's the place where I go be that, go play at. Yeah, with these buckets, I've been staying out of trouble. I like, I be focused, like, like make money, I can make money legit and you know I don't really need nobody to make the money with or you know get in no confusion no arguments and nothing I don't really fall out over it um but money is like it come in it's money I can use it's like nice piece of amount of money you know I made more than um, Burger King and um, McDonald's and Subway working a regular job making 825 875 an hour you know um being on the bucket, you probably can make fifteen, twenty dollars an hour, probably more than that. But nonetheless, I never settle for less. Yeah, I had my son when I was twenty. You know, things changed a little bit, but it's like it made me work harder. I like get out every day more. And I don't really got time to sit back and chill. I get time to, my time is, is to hustle and make money and come back and chill with my son and provide him with things he need and make sure he's straight. My main focus would be like making sure my son in the school and making sure he's straight and me having a good job and you know probably retire with the buckets. Um, at Charlie, uh, beating the buckets, eighty-seven. You no, know, I almost got a tour with him, but I ended up, you know, talking to him, you know, letting him know like it ain't that serious, you know. I had an altercation was we almost fell out over a few dollars. So, 87, you know, I told him, like, don't here to keep the money, man, it ain't, it ain't like that. And ever since then, you know, I've been hanging on my fate, cuffing with me, you know, and I, like, show him a lot of ways and stuff, like, teach him how to be a man and, you know, show him things, because, he ain't really got no father figure or, you know, person, somebody, you know, male around. Been knowing Charlie for five years, about four or five years, ever since I've been beating, beating on the buckets. Like, he was one of the first, he was one of the guys that came out when I used to first start beating, I used to always see him. Right, 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 right
Instagram name 070 underscore K Charles. We up next. Uh, my niece's birthday too. I gotta go get him a uh, haircut, take him to the party. Let him go party tomorrow with my niece tomorrow birthday, you know. Or to be having a little swim party. You know, I'm finna get ready to go hustle right now so I can make sure he's straight. Make sure he's good. Try to drop my little niece off of prison. So, you know, I'm finna get out of here and go make this money, go get to it. So tell us about the Bucket Boys. I mean, is it a, is it a when you say the Bucket Boys are 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 they a group of of six dudes? Are they thirty? Are they? Is oh there, no, it's a there's it? over a hundred of them on the south side, all ages. It's it's a span of almost three hundred of them, but we only got the hundred of them. We actually looking for a Bucket Girl because they say there's one out there. Really? Yeah, that's yeah. surviving. Really? Yeah. So hi, my name is Charlene. Charlene Lawson, aka they call me Ten K. You know, I've been beating buckets for five years. And what started me to beat buckets is for my brother coming in the house with money. And it was like, I was wondering where he was getting the money from. And I'm like, where you getting the money from? And he like, beating buckets. And I'm like, no, nah, I can't believe that. You ain't beating buckets. So I'm like, let me see your buckets and sticks. I'm like, where you beating at? He's 71st first and stay. I'm all right. So I go get my man that I know that he don't beat buckets. He the type, the criminal type, he the valid type. If he can't get it his way, he gonna take it. So I'm like, you wanna go beat some buckets? He like, yeah. So I'm all right, we go on the buckets. The first three lights, we like, no, nah, it ain't rocking. So we, okay. I'm like, no, nah, we gotta be out here. We ain't trying, or it's just our beat. So I was trying anything. So the first five came, I let him get the first five. He like, you don't want the two dollars? I'm nah, you keep the five. And we kept beating from there. And it's like shoes, food, going to school with new kids that you know that you ain't getting from your mama every day. And that's just a blessing to me. Cause it's already experience of beat drums. So I catch on quicker to the beats. Like if I, like it take me a minute to catch on to the beat. Like if I know the rhythm or the technique of the sound, then it's, it's quick for me to get on. But it's like everybody out here got the same beat and I try to do something different. Like switch up the, like flix it up, like flavor it, you know? Like everybody got the same beat. All the bucket boys got the same beat. Can't no bucket boy out here tell me that they ain't got the same beat. Cause if they put all us together, we got one sound. Boys that I beat around, you know, they'll try to try me because I'm a female, you know, or try to go in my pockets. Like, I only experience that like one time, you know. But other than that, everybody, they, oh, it's a bucket girl, let's be with her. You know, that's another way to make money or a quicker way to make money. She a female, you know. But most people don't look like that. Most people don't look at it like that. When we beat buckets, like most people that come up like on a ramp or wherever we beat that, we know most people be having bad days, you know, and, and the first thing they do, like, I don't get away from my car with the drum. But, you know, we could brighten up a person's day with just beat to a song they know, an old song or a rhythm that'll get their attention. And they can brighten their day up more than what it is. So it's feel like I'm pleasing the people more than anything. I won't even take the money because I'm up here entertaining the people more. That's what I'm actually out there to do is to entertain the people. Like for people that want to be, be buckets, I tell them, don't let nobody stop you from doing what you want to do. You know, even if it's something new experience, you feel me? It's something good for you. If you feel like it's something positive you want to do, then go ahead and do it. Don't let nobody tell you that you can't do it. My average in a day, I can make at least 150 to 200 a day. It depends on where I'm at or how the traffic moves. It could be slow days, like you won't get no more than 13 or 15 dollars a day. You know, but it, like me, I invest in my money, so I like putting it up. So if I know I get slow days like that, I keep my money and put it up until the end of the week so I can stack from now. But weekends, it's like 250 to 300 a day. Downtown, you can get four to, four to five. You know, we making more than people making in two weeks off of 500, like McDonald's. Like we can make that in a day if, if we wanted to. Jackson, I'm a Chicago bucket boy. I'm out here on 87th Street right now, trying to make a living. 
The reason I do what I do because I ain't got to sell drugs or rob anybody, even though I can get a job, but this is still an easy way for me to come up because I'm still using my skill and my talent. And it's like, and it ain't like I'm harming anybody, I ain't forcing anybody to give me anything, but if you like my talent and you like my work, then you give me that, it'd be a blessing. And I thank you for that, but you know, this is what I'm out here doing to make a living. That's be no buckets because they know the profit that we getting up out here but really don't know how to do it and they ain't really got the skill to do it. They just do it just because they see us do it and they see we come back with a pocket full of money, pocket full of change. And some people don't do what they supposed to do with the money. Some people support the drug dealers but I'm not saying that's what I do because I make sure I feed my family because I got a family to take care of. I make sure I put cl clothes and food on the table for myself like that. Some people don't do it. Some people don't think. People like get out here just because they did get what they want, not because of what they need. But if I really like, if you really wanted something like you really needed, you can just go get a job. Don't try to steal our hustle because some people making it bad for us. Like they'll see some people and they're like, oh, y'all, y'all don't need really not a beat, but they'll look at us and think we all together and that's making us look bad. Cause like some people, it'd be the real, it'd be the, it'd be the, uh, it'd be a real hot day. When people would just be, don't want to let their windows down, it's just be like, they be so frustrated, probably because they be tired out, they been from work. And the people that be out here beating, don't be getting no money, they get mad, drop their stick, throw the bucket in front of their cars, and just walking off, because they ain't getting no money. And they making us look bad, because we the original bucket boys, and we out here really doing it for a reason. So we, so a lot of us out here really doing this to feed our family. Some people just out here doing it just because they want some money. They don't really do it, but it is it's a, it's a story behind it, where it come from and how it started. But it's Bucket Boys all over the city. Like now, now you got Bucket Boys on 47th, from 69th to 63rd, to 75th, to 87th, to 95th. It's Bucket Boys everywhere, but you can't really tell the original because everybody's so split up. Now everybody think we all together. Like if one Bucket Boy do something wrong, it's just going to portray an image on all of us because we all bucket boys. Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. Chicago is experiencing murders at a record level. In just six months, there have been 228 murders, up 35% since last year, and twice as many as the number of Americans lost on the battlefields of Afghanistan. Chicago has the largest gang population in the country, with approximately 100,000 members who commit 75 to 80 percent of the city's homicides. The violence increasingly claims innocent and bystanders. It's like hectic because, you know what I'm saying, me being a black kid myself and having dreads in my head, you know what I'm saying, it's a lot of, it's a, um, it's like a lot of people who stereotype you out here, so they think you like everybody else. But when I'm drumming in the street, I'm just, I'm just myself, you know what I'm saying, I'm just trying to make a dollar, I'm just trying to make an honest dollar, you know what I'm saying, and, and I'm real talented, I own big, I'm not with the begging, I, I go and get it, you know what I'm saying, I'm an entertainer. But the struggle is like it's real hard and it hurt me every day, you know what I'm saying, to see a person, a black person like myself, they ignore me when I come to their window to try and entertain them. All you got to do is say yes or no, and I'm going to tell you, have a blessed day, and I, and I really appreciate that if you just say yes or no, because I'm, I'm the type of person who don't like to be ignored, you know what I'm saying, so it's like the police, they try to tell me to not do this. But it's like, if I don't do this and I ain't got no job, how, how else I'm gonna get some money? My people don't um, look out for me, so I always had to look out for myself since I was 11. You know what I'm saying? I had to go hard since 11, and I'm 29. You know what I'm saying? So I've been having to go hard ever since, like, really, like, day one. And you know what I'm saying? It's real hard in the streets of Chicago out here, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I really drum. I don't wanna do nothing bad to get no, no other money. So I'm getting it legit, and I got a job, so I do this for fun. You know what I'm saying? So, but the struggle, it's real hectic, man. Make me want to go do bad things, but I can't do nothing but this to go do to get good money. 
know what I'm saying? I don't want to be locked up, you know what I'm saying? Like all my friends, all my friends be running in cribs, selling selling drugs, you know what I'm saying? All type of stuff that ain't right, you know what I'm saying? And they ain't trying to go through that path because I done, I done seen all my friends die and in jail right now, you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm drumming real hard every day so I can just focus up on the right thing and that's being positive and getting money the right way. When I was growing up, they had uh, a lot of this stuff is dealing with no type of guidance in the uh, the uh, parks up there at all. When we had it, we had a supervision in those parks every single day. In fact, we had men to come out and actually, actually partake in training us in those baseball games or uh, whatever game relationships that we had, okay? We also had older teenagers who would take care of the young teenagers. Today, the young teenagers don't have anybody to look up to, okay? You have to cultivate these guys, not game-related stuff, but being able to deal with each other from the standpoint of brotherhood with each other. Get away from all that fighting. Get away from all that killing. Okay? It never has been like this. All the times that we've been together. In our own neighborhoods, we took care of our own neighborhoods. We didn't have to have the police come in and tell us what to do or to, to stop some things for us. We did it ourselves. And we can still do that today. Okay? We can still do that today. Shit just happened at school, man. Some dude trying to argue with me. Guess he ain't getting no money. He broke or something. Something wrong with him, man. But I'm finna go show my, finna go tell my mom what happened and stuff, stuff like that. Get back out here getting his money. only 8% of ninth graders in low-income communities are expected to graduate from college by age 25. That's in stark contrast to students from the highest income families, where 32% will finish college in that same time. One million kids dropping out of school every year. Johns Hopkins researcher Robert Ballfans wants to retool what he calls dropout factories. How bad is it? In a word, for if you live in a high poverty environment, it's really bad. Your, your chances of getting out with a good education and having a shot at the American dream are at best 50-50. Well, when I was 13, I was the man of the house, basically. I had provide for my family some things that they couldn't do. You know, like my mama was going through hard times and people was taking jobs and stuff like that. So, you know, um, Cubs game, and they was helping me pay bills and stuff like that when my mom didn't have it and she was laid off and stuff like that. But now my mama got her job back and stuff, and I'm still drumming, but it's a success for me because it took me a long way, and I learned some new things and stuff like that. But basically right now all I'm trying to do is get my mom the piece of paper, the, the diploma she want, and, and I'm going to try to live my life and just try to stack and do good from there. Gang, gang, gang. Take out to my old bike, man. Miss, old sucker. Alright. <laughs> I know that's right. Okay, I know that's right. Hey, man, these the Locust Brothers. How you doing? Hi, how y'all doing? I've been drumming since I was 12 years old. It started when I was in, like, I was going to the Cubs game late nights and stuff like that. But I, it had helped me provide my family and stuff. My mama was going through hard times, the hard things at the time, but I had to do something about it. But I went out there and started making some money. hard out here, I couldn't get no money in. And school wasn't buying my clothes and shoes, so I was trying to find a way to get some money and stuff like that. 
But one of my big brothers had showed me a way how to get some money, and I started drumming. He gave me some drumsticks and told me to just go out there and, you know, just have fun. Trying to drum on 55th and make some money, you know, just doing something, trying to stay out of trouble and stuff like that. But when I be making a day, some people be asking me there in the car, like, how much do you make? I be wanting to tell them, like, only make $100 a day, really, if you get out early. But if you get out of school, like, I go to school every day, so if I get out at 2 and I stay up there at, like, 4, I'm going to make, like, 40 50 $60. But it depends how, if the sun, if it's sunny or if it's rainy, you know. Get out here, you gonna make us rock. I swear to God, if you get out here, we gonna be rocking, bro. Basically, like, we damn, was the more hours I put in, the more money I get. Bucket kept me away from violence, cause like it helped me stop selling drugs and stop holding guns and just being out here on the streets. But man, it helped me make money too, cause that's what I want to do anyway, and I don't want to be on the streets selling drugs and making money anyway. So that's not no good look for me anyway. So. But main, the main thing I'm trying to do is just get some money and just stack it up so I can have something in the future. I don't, I don't want to be, like, shaking the cup on the corner and then after I get done with school and stuff like that. So I just got to make it what it is because life is hard. unemployment rate is nearly two percentage points higher than the national 7.3 percent rate. Economists say it's confirmation that the state's fiscal issues are scaring away businesses. I went up, went up, went up in the start, so you know, I'm finna, um, I got this job interview, so I'm finna um, try to find me some slacks and, you know, little tack, little, little tucks or something, so I can go look fancy, look nice or something, you know look presentable for this job I'm trying to get, you know, because of the winter, winter finna be starting, and, you know, baseball season over with, and it's just gonna be too cold, it's getting cold, so, you know, trying to be, like, put up somewhere, you know.
Got a little job interview going on, you know. Winter finna get ready to come. Something over with, so I'm finna have to, you know, get ready to look for me a job. So, shit, I got a job interview. I just um, left up out of this thrift store right here. Grabbing me some little gin shit, little, little tap and a little shirt. So I can go, you know, look presentable, you know. So I can go get this job, this J-O-B. But shit, if the buckets ain't gonna work out, I gotta do something. I ain't gonna just sit down. I'm a grinder. That's what I do. Make sure it's positive. I ain't gonna go sell no drugs or nothing. You no, know, I got I got a little homie, I gotta feed, so I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Straight positive, so you know, yeah. When finna come, time for me to get a J-O-B. I got a call back about the job or whatever. Things ain't work out. Thought I had how it was, how I thought it was gonna be. She saying cool, but they end up telling me they weren't gonna, weren't gonna be good for me. So, you know, so I'm finna um, get ready to start back just beat, man. Get ready to start back beating on the buckets. Get back to my money, man. Get back to the regular me, I guess. Guess that job just ain't me right now. Just gotta make, make something happen, you know? I got a little homie, I got to feed, so I got to do something. I ain't going to just sit down, sit back. I got to, you know, I tried to get the job and it ain't happened, so just going to get back to beating, get back out of there making this money. With the situation, I mean, I'm, I'm in the house until the situation gets better. What's the situation? Dealing with my girlfriend. She just got in a car accident. So her shoulder broke and one of her bones fractured and one of her ankles, like her heel is injured. So I'm in the house taking care of her until further notice. So like lifestyle wise, like when I go to school, like my mother, like my mother, she's in my life, but she's not in my life, you know, cause she don't have her own place, you know. So I'm living with my oldest two sisters. So we surviving, there's one in the house. So like, I know like me, I don't have no income to bring to the table when it's like paying for bills or when it comes to paying rent. Cause I don't have no, I don't have no income. I don't have no job to bring money to the table. So. Like house stuff like tissue, dishwasher, lid with bleach, clothes, stuff for the washer or for the house, I can get that off beating buckets. But for as far as my father, he's not in my life. He he ain't in my life. I don't have no father to me. Uh, but school wise, I'm going to school to get my GED because I dropped out like the middle of my senior year. Cause the uh, death of my auntie, the one that was my guardian, it was like the death of her. After that happened, it was like, ain't nobody kept them all. So basically it was like me and myself. So it's like the years when I was being the buckets for them, I, I really didn't need it for nothing. Like it wasn't really personal then until she passed away. It was like, we ain't had nothing. We didn't even have a crib. Like I still ain't got a crib to live in. You know, it's just my sister was welcoming me in her house as one. You know, even if I wasn't bringing money to the table, I was still welcome in the house until I was able to do something for myself or whatever the case may be. And then other than that, with my girlfriend, we got a son of our own that we provide for. She have a son of her own that we provide for as a family, as one. 
You know, and that's the other thing that I do if I'm not doing that to keep me from doing other things. But, uh, music. I've been liking music since I was a young uh, a child. My mama was a gospel singer, so it runs in the family. So it was like, I just started picking up rapping, like music rapping. I just started taking that serious this year from hanging around one of my friends because that's something he likes to do. So that was my first video it was out. I made my first video out this year. And it was it was good to me. I don't, I don't know. It I don't know. it depends on what I'm rapping on. Cause I don't like really rapping about violin all the time. I'm like a hip hop person. I like to rap about something that got a meaning to it. Cause everybody got this violin. So you know, it's like music was everything to me. time you ever got like in the studio and noticed that you started liking it? Uh, this year when I first made my first video that was the first song that I ever did in the studio everything else was like recording myself on my phone off somebody beat and recording myself off of but I never have been in the studio until my friend asked me to feature on one of his songs. What do uh, music do for you? Is it like an escape or something like that? Yeah, it's an escape but then again it's like um no not to me it's just to clear my mind, like to calm me down when I need to be calmed down. What else it does for you? Um, Just music, huh? Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. You ever dreamed about becoming big in music one day? Yeah, I dreamed about it becoming big in music one day. To give me all the uh, wants I need or whatever the case may be, but yeah. Who's your influence? Um, Jay Z. Give us an example why you like Jay Z. Yeah, because how his business is and the way he carry himself as a businessman. You know, it's a lot of people that don't like Jay Z, but it's like he provide and he shows like fan base wise love. Like when they like the recent incident with them when they were saying that they don't give nothing back to the fans and they did that him and uh, Beyonce and Scarlett that ten thousand dollar for that. Uh, I think for a cover repost. So that was like giving something back to the fans that people didn't think they did or with the entitled, with the $20, they charging everybody to put something on their YouTube or for a video or artist, it's only $20 for them to post their video. So it's like, yeah, Jay-Z that man. <laughs> Song. 99 Problems. <laughs> Why you choose that song? Man, cuz that, that song got a feeling to it to me. I don't know. It's like I understand that song in so many ways. I mean, you have you ever thought like what your life would have been like if you had your father in it? Yeah, but then again, 
Nah, because he was in my life for once upon a time. Like, he was there. It was like he was in and out. So it was like, if you ain't going to be here to stay, then don't be here at all to me. You think not having a fall in your life shaped you the way you are today? Like, yeah, honestly, like, figure-wise, like, choices I'd have probably made in my life, I probably wouldn't have made them if he was the guidance or the talk that I needed from him. So, yeah. Really too much you can say about him, though. Yeah. So how did you meet your girlfriend? I met my girlfriend playing ball in the basketball tournament because that was another skill that I have. I ain't gave that up neither. But I met her through a basketball tournament. And it was like, I think I was like in eighth grade and she was in seventh and we was all on the same team. You know, and, and I'm I'm cold and ball. I don't, I don't care what it is. You feel me? I'm cold and ball too. You know, uh, I think I'm the coldest one. I'm like the next Lisa Leslie, if you ask me. But she had to guard me. That's what it was. She had to guard me out of the seventh graders. Like everybody on her seventh grade team knew I was raw. So it was like backing down. Like no, nah, I don't want to stick her. So she like, no. Nah. Well, somebody got a sticker. She ain't finna do the team like that. So when she first came up and tried to reach for the ball, I crossed over so quick. She didn't even know I was past. I was going up for a layup. So when we break to get some water, she hit me with that. It's over. Oh, it's over. I ain't even know I was going with you. And me, um, okay. I know what that means, but um, yeah. That's when I first met her. So it was like a love at first sight thing. How long y'all been dating? We've been dating for five years and three months. How has that been? It's it been good. We had our altercations in and out, but we ain't gonna. So what I think of Chicago violence is it's, it's terrible. You know, from left to right, it's killing over a jacket, over some shoes, or who, who who looked the freshest, or who got it, or who mad, or who girlfriend it is, or who freaked fucked, or whatever your chick. But it, it's a lot of Chicago violence that goes on out here that I can't speak upon or speak a name of, because everybody got their reasons, everybody got their thoughts. So I can't really speak too much about Chicago violence, because if you hear Chicago violence, if you're from Chicago, you know what it is. You can relate to it if you in Chicago. So there ain't really too much I can say upon that, but it's, it need to stop in my eyes. I got a question. So I mean, like, um, you know, as far as your, your sexual preference, do you think people look at you different? You know what I mean? What do you think about, how you feel about America and how they look at, you know, same-sex marriage and all that type of stuff? Well, to me, obviously, it's it's coming in, but then it's not because it's a lot of states that's making it rough and it's, like, legal to marry the same state, to marry the same sex. So, to me, it really wouldn't matter who it make a difference to in my life. But this is something I like to be doing. This is something I'm comfortable with doing. I wouldn't care what the next person doing or what they doing. Cause I'm the type of person to say, like I got tunnel vision, I don't care what's going on around me. If, they, if it ain't focused on what's in front of me, then I don't care about what's going on around me or who thinking or how they thinking. You know, but other than that, we happy. <laughs>
And it's like, uh, what I'm doing, I'm going to school for my GED. But like, like you said, like most, like you say, most people just do it for themselves, and that is something that I'm doing for myself. Like, I, cause I don't have a high school diploma, and I knew that I could. I was right there from getting a high school diploma, but with the situation of the death, it was like it was all hitting me at once. So it was like GED, like I can go for that for job opportunities to give me a job or, or something that I know beyond beating buckets or doing what I'm doing. Even if it's not beating buckets, I want to go beyond bigger things. Like I have bigger dreams that I want to accomplish. So, how does the bucket help you far as like financial? Financial-wise? Uh, Financial-wise, is taking care of my little one. That's what I provide for. If I'm not taking care of him, I'm spending it on my studio time or investing for my studio time. Have you worked with any other artists in Chicago that, that anyone know about? No, but the uh, the artist that I am trying to get a hold to is Katie Benz. I got a connection to Katie Benz because my sister grew up with Katie Benz. But she taxing, you know. She going to do the feature with me, but she said I have to have my bread and I got to be serious with it. Like, ain't no playing around, like, straight trying to get it. Because, like she say, all money is good money in her eyes. <laughs> Like this little, I'm doing a little remix to one of the little Dirk song called Different. Like y'all wanna hear, like you wanna hear where I'm coming from with it? Yeah. Like it was, it's like, I compete with niggas today, I fed turn food before last year. Shit so real, these niggas can't last here and they ain't laugh for them. I done put my life on the laugh for them. Studio bean buckets every day trying to grind for them. Something like that. When did you start noticing that you liked the same sex? Oh, I've been liking the same sex. I don't know. It wasn't no thing that made me start liking the same sex. I always had that feeling as a kid that I liked the same sex. Like my mother, she ain't approved me liking the same sex neither. She won she didn't like it, but she respected it because she, to me, she didn't have no choice but to respect it because I'm a daughter. So she didn't like the situation that I like girls, but she respected me for it, to be honest with her, to tell her that I like the girls. Yeah. So I got this mixtape coming out. I want it to be called Loyalty Over Royalty. I wanted to have like 10 to 12 tracks on it. My features, like features that I would like to be on it is Katie Benz, Drizzy, Tink, or Lil Herb, or somebody on it, or Lil Dirk on my uh, tracks, or whatever the case may be. But if it go bigger than what I'm doing, like music wise, like my first thing with it, like music wise, is to get, like, to get me some, somewhere that I want to be, somewhere that I feel like I'm, I'm wanting to be, or provide for besides doing what I'm doing, besides like beating on buckets or on the rep, like I want it to be bigger than that. So I feel like the music with that, it'll take me beyond what I need to do. Cause studio time is crazy. Like my studio man from, he went from 30 to 35. And I know if I get to be like my cameraman, but the, the girl like I had, she'll do it for a hundred dollars, but it's like she basic to me and I want to like do my videos with different people to see how they taste is with the videos. And I know people that is high quality, they want 250 to 400. So it's like I'll let you put on for studio time and video time. You can invest that in your own studio and have your own studio or get your own cameraman or whatever the case may be. Any videographers in Chicago you like to work with that you heard of that people like? Uh, I would like to do Zay or Soundman, but they tax them too, you know. And they majority they videos ain't really like like good to me as like raw to me. It ain't basic as like a hundred dollar video man, but they charge like a stack or better for a flip or back for a slash show or whatever the case may be, or one set scene. Hmm. She ain't even the original new, new no, as hell. She don't know no plug. No, no, no. She you don't know even know how like much. I don't even know what the sticks in the bucket work. She don't know what them work, bro. Cause I ain't know what it work was. Remember? Oh, you put me with G. I ain't no damn. Damn. Yeah.
That's how other people think it's me. Tell you, boy. Niggas that want to be thirsty to come see Lil D'Angelo. Hey, I want to be with the money group. She, boy, I ain't gonna lie. Everybody want to be with us, man. I can't be like that. I don't know how God made us meet up. I'm <laughs> Jesus did. I just up. kept me away from violence by going out of town. Like a Detroit Tigers. Let me show y'all. I got to show you. Take off the school shirt, man. Detroit Tigers. Once a Tiger, always a Tiger. Never go change, man. That will help me. This go help me stay out of trouble. And I'm not even going to be around violence. And Detroit is like the second, I heard, the second number one capital, but, I mean, the second capital, what is it? Second, second murder, murder capital. Second murder capital of the state, but it's not really bad when you're in the downtown area and just, you know, Detroit lovers, so. Once a tiger, always a tiger. Come on, shit, man. Can I shoot the video? Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's my wild out, man. Get them on camera, man. My producers, man. Take that shit to their head. Got something to drink that get you up. Skull of their heads. What you want, man? Skull of that, that, that. Skull of that. Yeah, water is too good, huh? I don't want water. That's you all day. Get two of them, you good. Get You want to get famous, little lady? Huh? You already famous? You want to take my number down there and let you in? Yeah, I'm just basically graduate and give my mama the diploma. So that's what I'm on right now. Cheers. Mm -hmm. Really historic moment here in the United States. Uh, what a week it is for the President of the United States. He's walking down those stairs, very, very pleased. Let's listen in. This morning, the Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law, that all people should be treated equally, regardless of who they are or who they love. This decision will end the patchwork system we currently have. It will end the uncertainty hundreds of thousands of same-sex couples face from not knowing whether their marriage, legitimate in the eyes of one state, will remain if they decide to move or even visit another. This ruling will strengthen all of our communities by offering to all loving same-sex couples the dignity of marriage across this great land. Thank you. Oh, what got me out here tonight is just to get out here just to have fun or just look at the uh, vibe of the water or whatever, to put my mind, like, put my mind where it's at, like, free or whatever the case may be, just to clear my mind of things. What brings me out is where you can just sit up there and just think about anything, just let go of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Get away from all the violence, you know, people dying every day and stuff. You know what I'm saying? You only get one life. So you try to live it to the fullest, you know, every 10, the second, and hour, many count, you know, because you could be here today and gone by tomorrow. Just with the type of environment and the stuff that's going on in this world. And it just so ridiculous and crazy because the simple fact that it's, it's, it's these innocent people that's dying for no reason. You know what I'm saying? You want to get well, out trying to enjoy themselves, you know?
just going out, period. And everywhere ain't safe. Anywhere ain't safe. For an example, like taking the kids to a park. People will come up there and shoot the park up, regardless if it's kids or not. Or not. You know what I'm saying? People always react instead of thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like my grandma told me, you know, always think before you act. still feel me Americans in this motherfucker, you feel me? We still got some type of right. So other than that, it's nothing. I just feel like a regular person when I walk up here with people. <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> I don't care what nobody say. You know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, this is us. Nobody else in our shoes. Nobody else know anything. This us. You know what I'm saying? We just being who we is, like this is who we is, and if you can't accept us for who we is, regardless if we white, black, any any color that's with somebody opposite than they own sex, you know what I'm saying? Should nobody be treated no different than another person just because of their sexuality or their skin color or the way they dress or anything like that? Like everybody in this world for one reason, you know, and that's just to live life and have fun. A lot of people don't make it to see tonight you know me i love it i love showing out you know because i don't got no problem because that's like if you don't it's like you hand from yourself you know what i'm saying if you don't sit up here and be yourself what you gonna sit up here in like what um, i just don't care what they say i really don't care they kiss my ass It's funny, I'm laughing because the way we met is kind of crazy. Because we was at this little basketball tournament little thing. Coach had it going on. You know, she was a rock player or whatever, and he was like, somebody stepped up to her. Everybody else was scared to step up to her. So I stepped up to her, she crossed me over. I got upset and told her it was over. And she was like, <laughs> And she was like, well, like, damn, when was we going together? Like, what? Like, what happened? So, it was like, to me, it was like, she had me from the start. Like, I just don't want to be with nobody else. Just for her. Just for her. And since then, it just been going on and on for five years. And what, five months so far? And I wanted to live forever. Ain't nothing here really good if you ain't doing something positive. So I'm trying to stay away from Chicago, man. Living in Inglewood be hard sometimes. It's people dying on a manly basis every day. People filling up the hospitals and a lot of stuff be going on, a lot of violence. So I'm trying to get this car so I can stay out away from violence, you know? Because CTA is not cool. All the stuff, people getting shot on CTA, babies getting killed, that's not cool to me. I don't, I don't like that. So basically what I'm going to do, I just got kicked out of a neighborhood high school, like Harp High School. It was on 65th and Woods, but it, it wasn't no good school. So now I'm in an academy. It's way better. And they like taking, trying to teach me a skill so I can move on and things like that. But now, Inglewood just... It's not good to be. It's just not good for no one to be. So I'm just trying to make it out of here.
ladies. Back to light the dough, ladies, you guys. Thank you guys. I'm waiting on my ride, ready to go to the studio, you know, ready to do this drop. I'm trying to drop this song, there's like this single called Feeling Good, the remix, you feel me? I'm trying to contribute to one of my dead homies and work on my mixtape, Loyalty Over Royalty, because that will be dropping soon. I'm trying to drop that before the winter time. Other than that, this is my first time going in a big studio, so I am kind of nervous, but other than that, I'm living like another day. All right, you think you can describe how your partner got killed or whatever? Oh, it's, it's natural, like it's normal, like it ain't norm. It's new ski, you feel me? So he just got shot, like trying to be shopping at the mall, and they came up and had him and shot him. How did you feel in that situation happened? No, I was hurt to the bone. I was hurt, like literally hurt. I'm still hurting to this day, but you know, I'm trying to make it like it's another day. I got like 10 songs out. Like I'm trying to like, on the track, I got like five on one called Been On My Grind, another one called Capping, another one called Catch A Op, like it's one I featured on one of my homies, Reggie. Like, I most definitely did have to be there like bucket days, hours. Like I don't even be beating the buckets unless I really need it or entertain it or like I'm bored or mad or something or I want to go release some scratch but other than that my studio time my buckets have been the advantage of me getting in the studio I have to spend like hours like I only spent four to hours but now I'm spending like seven eight hours to make sure I get studio time or whatever for the next day or whatever because people is taxing with studio time so I'm trying to make sure I have my bread up to two. First day of school, you know, just got out. It was cool, I enjoyed it. But, you know, it uh, started off this year, you know what I'm saying, doing something sad, beating on buckets. Trying to, you know, multitask, you know, yeah, try to get a job, beat on the buckets, and go to school. Like, you know, I do, I do, do the buckets, but it's more to life, you know, more than that. It's a lot of things, you know, I want to do in life. Trying to take up on uh, carpentry. Study automotive, try to uh, you know, try to master in one another, get a major or something. Trying to get a degree, you know, get myself going, you know, so I get older, you know, can't get no younger in these streets. I'm studying at um, Olive Harbor. Yeah, that's why I'm going to school, man. I'm 103, I'm 103, I'm Oh, it was, it was decent. Yeah, it was, uh, I got to meet my new teachers and stuff, you know. New beginning coming, you know. They, they were like, it was all good. Next three years, 
in my life? Should I should be graduating? Should it be a role model trying to get ready to graduate? My third year up in the, um, college, whatever, you know. Probably um, working somewhere. Working on getting my place right now. I should have my own place, my own little, little, little career, little spot, you know, for me. Find me on the streets like that, you know. So, I'm just, just see me, see myself doing good, you know, staying out the way, going to school, you know. Maybe she know what I need to be doing in life. I know for a fact, you know, I'm, you know, I'm from, I'm originally from Chicago, born and raised on the South Side, you know, and you know, it's just something, you know, to, you know, get the kids, you know, to uh, a way to, you know, raise money for themselves and stuff. Like it's positive, that. right? It's positive. It's most definitely positive. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you know you you come up in an environment where you you don't really have much. You know what I'm saying? The kids doing something positive with their lives. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it's most definitely a good thing and. You know, it's, it's most definitely a thing about Chicago that, you know, most people, you know, know about and come across, you know, downtown, not even just out south, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it, it can be anywhere, you know? So it's most definitely, you know, a positive influence and it definitely get, I see like kids like six, seven year, years old on the, you know, 
on the um expressway, you know, doing it, you know, doing their thing, you know, trying to get money for themselves, you know what I'm saying? Cause you you don't know what type of situation they in, you know, they may you know come from a family where they don't have much, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and they go out and they make an effort and you know try to raise some money, you know. They could be out robbing and stealing or doing something wrong that we they think we do, but they're not. They're doing something positive. Yeah, most definitely positive. Most definitely they could, they, like you said, they could. They most definitely they got more, more, uh, more than enough, you know, opportunity to go do crime, you know, shoot all type of stuff. But you no, know, they instead, you know, they that's what they do. They and it's 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 a lot of them, you know. It's it's not just one set of bucket boys, you know. It's a whole. They all over the city. All over the city, and it's just a, a something you know they do to you know raise money and you know do something positive with themselves. You know what I'm saying? Man, y'all, y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all keep your heads up for real. I, I know it's not that that many opportunities. You know what I'm saying? But y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all can end up like the original Bucket Boys on tour, going around the world doing shows, all type of stuff. Just keep y'all head up, keep doing what y'all doing, and y'all make it. And one more, and one more other thing. One more other thing. How do you feel about somebody from Chicago, two twin filmmakers, making a film on the Bucket Boys? Have you had anything to say to them for spreading the word and promoting something positive by making a film on it? What would you say? It's just, it's just amazing that somebody, you know, somebody's out here doing something, you know what I'm saying? Doing something. From our city. Yeah, from our city, letting, letting the people, the people know, you know, this is, this is what, uh, what they do. It's, it's not necessarily crime that they out here doing. They, they out here being productive with their lives, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, most definitely, like, we appreciate y'all, like, 100%. Like, the city of Chicago love y'all, for real, most definitely. Whether y'all realize it or not, like, the city love y'all, for real, for real. Like, most definitely. You know what? I think they're doing good. I think they're making some decent music, you know? They're trying. They're putting forth the effort. They ain't out here robbing nobody. They ain't doing nothing to nobody. So, you know, handle their business. Oh, I'm, I know the city appreciates the Bucket Boys. You see them at Bulls games. You see them all over the place now. You know what I'm saying? So much love because the city gives them. So, you know, you got to pay respect. Oh, they definitely enrich the culture. I think that uh, nobody makes music better than the Bucket Boys in Chicago. I love walking up and down Michigan Avenue and hearing some of these kids beat on these buckets. Because, it, it, I mean, with me being a homeless man, it really gives me a beat to walk to on these streets. You know, it, it uplifts my spirits. And it's part of the culture of Chicago. Is it positive? Could they be doing something else negative with all the negative things that surround, uh, you know, the African-American communities these days? I think they're doing one of the, the most positive things that they could as African-American people. They're bringing more culture to their, their, their race and their generation and in Chicago in general, you know, so I think they're doing a very good job at what they're doing, and it's very positive in that. And if you had something to say about the Bucket Boys to the Bucket Boys, what would you say as an appreciation factor to them? Thank you guys, and keep up the good work. Young guys, they come from uh, projects and you know uh, uh, real tough areas, man. And uh, I would much rather see them carrying drumsticks than to be carrying pistols. So when all these people start complaining about them playing the buckets, they should be happy that they're playing the buckets because they could be doing a whole lot worse. And uh, not could be, they, but they would be doing a whole lot worse. The buckets is keeping them out of trouble. It's keeping them interested in doing something. They get interested in music. And they take it to another level and they get into something that's really positive. So I'd rather see them doing something positive than to be robbing people or selling drugs. So it's, it's glad. I'm glad I was a part of starting something like that because I know I was one of the first cats that was doing it out here. 
you know, the shorties used to see me up at Wrigley Field and at the water tower, and next thing you know, it just spread like wildfire. So I'm kind of proud of that, to be, be able to be a part of helping them get into something. And, and how do you feel about the two filmmakers that's from the south side of Chicago making a film on it, and they're from here? If you had anything to say to them, what would you say for shining a light on those bucket boy cultures? Very good thing that you're doing it, and you're doing it in a way where you get the real truth on what's going on. Because a lot of people are saying a lot of bad things about those young men, and uh, you bringing out the real truth, and I'm glad of that. That's a real good thing. Okay, and what's your name and where you're from? I'm Mark Johnson. I'm from Chicago, originally from the South Side, but I'm on the North Side right now. But uh, I'm the original Bucket Man, Mark Johnson original Chicago bucket man. Oh, I would say thank you and keep on doing it and keep on pushing and don't let nobody bring you down. Don't let nobody discourage you. Keep practicing, get better and take it to another level.